Tactics and glory go hand in hand. If you're good at the first, the latter should follow. In this new game from Creo Team, the gameplay certainly pushes the tactics side of things, not in any deep or meaningfully realistic way that a budding Guardiola or Klopp would want, but quite bizarrely, Football Tactics and Glory feels more suited to fans of turn-based tactical RPGs than pure football management fans. Think of this more as a tactical RPG with a battle system, seeing your party fight it out on turn-based grid battles, but based in a soccer theme. The football management side of things is also geared up to something more akin to a traditional JRPG than, say, Sega's long-running Football Manager series. The game focuses heavy on upgrading your team through earning experience for their class or position on the field, gaining new special powers or moves, and expanding their abilities with a number of skill trees. It feels like it's one step away from a weapons vendor and a two-hour tutorial on cooking curry to boost your stats. Joking aside, the football management side of things ticks all the boxes from a casual level. You have an impressively large number of unlicensed leagues that you can start your game in, complete with a majority of that country's teams who are populated with randomised players. One outstanding feature of this game is the ability to edit pretty much anything from the names of the leagues and teams, the kits and badges of each team, and even the ability to edit every player on any team from their name and shirt number right down to their appearance with a very detailed character editor. As it is, the developers have created fairly acceptable likenesses of teams' kits and badges to the point they may not even need your creative touch, but you could spend absolutely hours just in the editor alone making real-life players for each team. The amount of data you can play around with here is staggering, and like I said, very impressive for a game like this, so a big thumbs up for that. Moving into the gameplay, and whilst you won't have the depth of FM20 here, it's more than enough for casual or time-restricted football fans. You can manage your roster and formations, enter a simple transfer market to pick up new players, and coaching mainly consists of levelling up your players when they reach XP thresholds. The seasons do feature league and cup competitions, and the access to stats from not only your own division, but those around the world is a nice touch. I would have liked some sort of hands-on training option, partly to help you learn the actual match systems, or even the ability to arrange friendlies during the season, but beyond the brief tutorial introduction, you're pretty much on your own for the most part. The game does feature a quite superb encyclopedia of information about not only the real life rules of soccer, but also a very detailed description of all the different systems in the game. These sections are very nicely polished and even perfectly readable in docked mode, but on the other hand, it does mean a lot of reading and not so much hands on learning, but still, I really appreciated the obvious effort that had been put in here. So, you have your bog standard football management game set up, and when it comes time for your players to step over the white line, this is where Football Tactics and Glory comes into its own. Each match is presented on a 10 by 7 grid and is a cross between a tabletop game, be that a sports board game or something like Sabutio, and a turn based RPG battle. The match flow is based on each team having a series of turns that take approximately 6 minutes off of the in game match clock. On a turn, the active team can make a minimum of three moves, be that repositioning players on the field or using the current ball carrier to make a pass or shot, and so on. Some players have special moves which can be assigned to them in the management part of the game, and using a special move with a player is riskier, but if it comes off, then not only will it more than likely have a greater effect on the pitch, it will also not cost you a move point. So, in essence, you could actually have four or more moves on your turn rather than the default three. As your team levels up and more players obtain these special skills, then your turns will become much more varied and expansive, much like how combat evolves as the hours pass in a JRPG. The controls in the match sections are well thought out and after a match or two, you will be pulling off your turns with barely much thought to what buttons do what. Just like the management side, the user interface during the match is also well thought out, with little touches like pressing down on your D-pad to see quickly what level your player's skills are and if they are being affected by terrain or elemental effects, or if you forget whose turn it is, pressing left on the D-pad will quickly show visually who is attacking and so on. Action in the game plays out like lots of individual battles across the field, with player stats compared and along with a hidden dice roll, it's usually the stronger player getting to execute their move. Whether that's tackling another player, dribbling around them or attempting a shot on goal. 
it's a nice system and again due to the excellent UI everything is very clearly displayed and although sometimes the randomness doesn't quite go the way you expect it to this simulates the untold number of variables that go into real life sport. If the best teams won 100% of the time it wouldn't be much fun now would it? Another comment I'd make on the matches is in the early days when your team are a bunch of scrubs Three moves never feels quite enough and games can dissolve into a midfield slog and a war of attrition as the action never really gets a chance to settle in the final thirds of the pitch. Most of your moves will be spent chasing loose balls or trying desperately to hold on to possession but once you level up some players or maybe transfer in a star striker and get some of those skills assigned to your squad you'll then find you can shift the ball around much faster and get more shots on goal. I'm sorry to harp on about it but again this feels like your early battles in a JRPG where all you have is a crooked wooden stick to hit slimes with but give it a few hours and you're pulling off magic spell combinations to beat huge dragons. Players can be injured or sent off through bad tackles and subs can easily be sent on with the Y button and you're also free to change the formation to combat how the other team are playing. If you start down in the amateur leagues games are played out in front of three spectators and a dog but as you work your way through the divisions the quality of the surroundings improves to match which is a nice touch. There is a lot at play in the match system, far too much to go into all the details here but suffice to say the match sections are really very enjoyable and dare say addictive to play and given each full match only takes a maximum of 5 minutes tops to play it makes playing through a chunk of games a breeze. You do have the option to just watch the game unfold on the pitch without your input and even just to simulate a quick result if you don't have the desire to handle the matches yourself. There's also a couple of multiplayer modes here with a local hot seat mode which is a brilliant idea and also an online mode where you can take your current career team and match them up against your friends. Unfortunately I've not been able to test this but I'll hopefully post an update once the game is released if I can find any online games. So overall there's a lot to like about Football Tactics and Glory. The lack of a real license and the slightly limited management side of things means the game may not appeal to hardcore football manager fans but the unique twist on the match engine the game's overall polish and its quick to play addictive nature means it certainly has some appeal. The elephant in the room is unfortunately the asking price which is £36 and $40 on the Nintendo Switch. I believe the higher price than the Steam version is due to the game receiving a physical retail release on consoles and this can be a good and bad thing. It means the eShop price is inflated somewhat though often the upside to this is that you may be able to find a cheaper physical version if you shop around. If it's worth your money will be down to the individual and it isn't really for me to judge. I will say there is a lot of content here and a game that's almost infinitely playable and it's a well thought out and very polished game. I do have to take the price into consideration with my scoring though and with that in mind I'm going to be awarding Football Tactics and Glory on the Nintendo Switch still an excellent 8 out of 10. If you find the Football Manager series too intimidating or boring even then Football Tactics and Glory offers a genuine alternative and a unique spin on the sports management genre. Ok there you are, hope you enjoyed the review of Football Tactics and Glory on the Nintendo Switch. Please hit the like button below if you did. Leave me a comment what you think about this one. I'm guessing a lot of the comments are going to be regarding the price more than the gameplay but let me know what you think below. Drop me a subscribe if you're new here. Always welcome to have new subscribers. And uh, with that, I will see you all on the next video. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.